Okay, so guys, these are going to come up on the stage now, and these are going to have uh, your songs and readings and all that now. So we're looking forward to it. So why don't we all give them a round of applause as they make their way up?
no snow in Bethlehem, just shifting desert dunes. There is no shining Christmas tree, no sparkling sleigh bell tunes. The gift the wise men give the babe for frankincense and myrrh. No toy train sets, no Lego blocks. No stuffed animals in covered purr. When we look back at the first Christmas, it seems so strange we will admit. Christmas today, I'm happy to say, looks brighter and quite a bit different. But still we remember that long ago desert and the baby who was born in the stable. In celebration of a loving God who gave us all that he was able, God gave us only son so that we could live forever. And so we remember that very first Christmas that made our lives all much better. Can you turn it up a bit? Happy 
Okay, absolutely brilliant. Well, a <clears throat> little surprise for you, everybody. But since you sang for us, I'm going to sing for you. Okay? <laughs> Hooray! Yay! Thanks, Yay! All right. Yay! And, and it is my absolute favourite Christmas song. But unfortunately, it is not on Michael Bublé album. But here we go. <clears throat> Ready? <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. That's not Christmas. Ha <laughs> yeah, it's, not. it's not. It's not. It's not, it's not, it's it's not a Christmas song. song. No, it's a birthday. <laughs> but, but I think it is a Christmas song. Think it again, well, but it's not. Think, well, think about whose birthday it is, though. Because isn't Christmas really just a celebration of Jesus' birthday? No. Hello, Hudson. <laughs> come up with me. No. Ah, come on, Hudson. Uh, see, imagine if it was your birthday. And then everyone was getting really excited and started counting down the days to your birthday. And then school was like, oh, it's only going to be one more week until your birthday. And then, oh, it's only four more sleeps to your birthday. Only two more sleeps to your birthday. Yes! In fact, everyone got so excited that it's your birthday, they decided to close the schools, give all the grown-ups a day off work just because it's your birthday. <gasps> That'd be amazing. And then I think about how everyone decides we should get presents and we should put up decorations telling everyone that we're celebrating your birthday! Well, imagine if everyone decided that because it's your birthday, they should be nice to each other. 
and kind. And then finally, the day comes, it's your birthday! And yeah. all the people who said that they were celebrating your birthday don't come to your birthday party. They get so busy giving presents to other people that they forgot to bring anything for you. Or they didn't bring anything or talk about your... They were so busy talking about your birthday with other people, they forgot to actually include you. That would be horrible. But so often that's what we do with Jesus' birthday. We get so excited about all the other things that happen at Christmas time that we forget to actually celebrate his birth. We kind of squeeze Christ out of Christmas a little bit. So <clears throat> here's my title for the service this morning, okay? Are you ready? <clears throat> You ready? <laughs> <clears throat> Christmas is for kids. Oh, no, wait, no, wrong kind of kid, wrong kind of kid. No, not that kind of kid. Uh, 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 there, okay, yes. Christmas is for children, for, for kids. Yes, yeah, that's, that's so much better. See, what I mean is the, the real magic and beauty of Christmas is in the wide-eyed wonder of children. It's the pure joy and unfiltered excitement. And my message really for everyone is to get Christmas this year, we should see it through the eyes of children. I mean, I know I say it every year that next Christmas will be different from this Christmas. Next Christmas will be the year whenever I don't buy as much or spend as much. Next year, I'll make more time. Next year, I'll make sure that I can spend some time helping the homeless or the needy or, or give a wee bit more time or give a wee bit more money. And, and next year, it's going to be different. And then typically, next year comes in as the exact same as the year before. So I think maybe it's important that we enjoy Christmas the way children <coughs> enjoy Christmas. To children, Christmas is magical. Christmas is simple. And it really is the little things that mean the most. Going out for hot chocolate, an impromptu trip to the swimming pool or the cinema when they're not having to compete with a phone for their parents' attention. All those things allow you to make memories. And those are the things that make Christmas special. But there is a deeper meaning to this title. There's a deeper reason behind it because when I say Christmas is for kids, it's not that I want older people to be excluded. No, rather what I would like to do is I want to follow on from what Jesus taught about little children. Because in Matthew 18 and Matthew 19, he points to the disciples, to little children around them and says, guys, guys, listen, you need to be more like these children. If you want to be part of the kingdom of God. In fact, even says to some of them, says, look, if you don't become like these children, you'll not even get into the kingdom of heaven. You have to be more like the child. Children don't live with doubt or worry. They live with hearts full of wonder and imagination, trust and belief. <laughs> they trust that the presents are going to be there on Christmas morning. They trust that the food's going to be there. They trust that everything is going to fall into place. They just want you to join in. Are you going down there? Okay, there we go. And what I would say to, to the grown-ups in the room before we start talking to the children is that come to the manger again with a fresh, wide-eyed wonder. Stop rushing, stop hurrying, pause, and take it all in. The wonder of Emmanuel, God who is with us. Now, Jesus says that Christmas faith is about the child, that it's Jesus' birthday. We can't forget that, but the invitation is to come and become like little children and trust our <laughs> Heavenly Father with a simple and complete Faith. Stop rushing, stop hurrying, and be in awe. Now, 
we've had, I, I didn't bring the presents out today because uh, of, of the children performing, but uh, we've been going through some of the, the presents of Christmas faith, right? And right at the center we had the big one, I, because Christmas is not about you. It's about Emmanuel. It's about the incarnation that God has come. Then last week we followed it up with F because F is for father and and the angels showed up and they didn't say hey glory to to the baby which they could have or glory to the shepherds or glory to the wise men they said glory to god in the highest because it was the father who made it all possible he chose mary and joseph he chose the bethlehem he chose it all but this morning the letter is going to be t and t is for trust to trust in God our Father like little children. Because that's what Christmas is all about. Mary had to trust the angels. Joseph had to trust Mary, which was a big ask. Because he had to figure something out before the angel came and told him. The wise men trusted a star. They had to be smart enough to not trust Herod. It was all about trust. Now let me give you an example, okay? Hudson was sick this week okay in a very high temperature and i had to take him to the doctor and do lots of checks and then they said look we need to give him this medicine and hopefully this will make him feel better now do you think i went hold on a minute here mrs doctor lady because yes ladies can be doctors as well but no of course not I, I i gave him the medicine in the car part of the pharmacy because i trusted the doctor now if some random stranger came up to me and says here listen here is a bottle of yellow substance marked randomly with words that i don't understand give that to your son <laughs> like no you crazy person of course i'm not going to do that What's the difference? Because I didn't know the doctor. She was as much a stranger to me as anyone else on the street. The difference is that I trusted her. She says, look, give this to your child. It will help him. And that's what I did. I trusted. And in Luke 1 verse 38, we read about Mary being told about God's plan. Gabriel comes and says, look, you're going to have a baby. He's going to be called Jesus. And all this is going to happen to you. And here's what she says. She says, I'm the Lord's servant. Let everything you've said happen to me. In that moment, she decided to trust God. She didn't know what was going to happen next. She didn't know what, what other people were going to say. She didn't know if Joseph was going to stay with her. She, she didn't know any of these other things. But she said, God, if this is what you want for my life, then okay, I'm in. Sign me up. Let's do this. I trust you. And really, that's not just the heart of the Christmas story. It's the heart of the entire Bible. God wants us to trust in him. In fact, there's a whole book of the Bible dedicated to how all we have to do is trust in Jesus. It's the book of Galatians. The people there wanted to add all these different rules to get into heaven. That you had to dress a certain way and you weren't, eat to eat. You weren't allowed to eat lovely, delicious things like lobster and bacon and bacon wrapped in lobster and lobster wrapped in bacon oh it'd be amazing <laughs> and the bible says guys don't be so silly don't be so daft what you need to do is be like a little child and trust in jesus that's enough and here's one of the most important christmas verses in the entire bible although it's probably one of the most ignored it's in galatians And in Galatians 4, it says, When the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. Okay, so that's an incarnation. Born of God. Jesus was God. But also born of a woman, so he was totally human. And God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to law. Okay, because without Jesus, what we were trying to do is we were trying to be good enough to earn our way into heaven. That was never going to work. We can never be good enough. So he sends Jesus to free us from that trap of trying to be good enough. So he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba, Father, or Daddy. And now you're no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, he has made you his heir. This is the beauty and the wonder and the reason behind Christmas. God sent us his son so that he could call me his son and call you his son or you his daughter. Christmas absolutely is for children. 
And when you trust in God, that makes you his child. And then we can be adopted into God's family and we get to call God Dada, Abba, which is Father. And all we have to do is trust in him. It's not about how often you come to church or how many questions you can answer in a quiz about Jesus or whether you've been... The only thing that matters is whether you've been trusting in Jesus as your saviour, the only one who can take away your sin. Here's what John has to say about it. In 1 John 3, he says, See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children. And that is what we are, when we trust in him. <coughs> Let me repeat. Children, uh, Christmas is absolutely for children. Take the wonder of Christmas through the, take it all in through the eyes of a child. As brilliant as it is, there are many cheap and free ways to, to make memories this Christmas with them. Please do that. And I pray you make wonderful memories this year with your children, with your grandchildren, with your nieces, your nephews, and all the extended family. But far more important is to become a child of God this Christmas. This Christmas, the invitation is there to come and put your trust in the Savior. Sing Silent Night. <laughs>
minutes. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time this morning that we've been able to enjoy and reminded by what the children have been saying to us. <laughs> Father, it's hard to deny. Yeah, there's been a wee bit chaotic this morning. Uh, gremlins in the system. And yet, Lord, through it all, I believe that you've been speaking to people, challenging people, because no, nobody's going to come here this morning and think, yeah, that church is full of perfect people. The pastor, he, he, he's clearly perfect. No, uh, no, no one's doing that. But rather, Lord, all we're trying to do is point to you. The one who is perfect, the one who is holy, the one who is just, the one who is righteous, but also the one who is full of love and grace and mercy and forgiveness. The one who simply asks us to come and to trust in you. And so, Lord, I pray, help us to put aside the misconceptions that we so often have or the parodies of, of Christmas and the nativity that we sometimes carry with us. But Lord, to get to the heart of it, that at the fullness of time you sent forth your Son to free us from the law and to make us your children. <coughs> and I pray, Lord, that that's what we will carry forth especially now as we go into a time of communion. And we ask this in your name. Amen. So as we go into communion, it's a story that I tell every year. And for that, I apologize. And yet I'm still going to tell you this story. So I suppose it's not much of an apology. But when I was in Israel about five years ago, we spent an afternoon in the real Bethlehem. It's literally a two-minute bus ride from the gate at Jerusalem. Uh, it's no time at all. Uh, but the local who was taking us around, the, the town was outstanding. The village itself is not that spectacular. There is a guy, a billionaire, who's kind of moved in and is trying to revamp it all and sort of uh, make, clean it up and make it look a wee bit nicer. But it's very ordinary. But the guide who's taken us around says that as, as Westerners, we miss some of the most beautiful symbolism in the Christmas story because we don't know the culture. We don't know the full extent of what was being told, especially to the angels, to the shepherds. And he said that while the shepherds were watching their flocks by night, their industry would have not been for the locals in Bethlehem. Their main industry would have been to sell the sheep that had been used for sacrifice up in Jerusalem, up at the temple. Okay, the, the, to buy a lamb or a sheep up in the temple, you're paying the temple prices. They're a ripoff. You don't want to do that. But if you're traveling, you don't have to deal with carrying the sheep all the way in case he gets hurt or in case he gets uh, damaged or dirty. And sheep being sheep, it often happened. Your best bet, the wise thing, okay, at the Don Mina man, and he's kind of going, I like this setup. You know, just travel your distance, get a cheap lamb from the guys at Bethlehem, and then it's only a two minute jumped up the road. <coughs> but it meant that their lambs that they sold had to be perfect. They had to be without blemish and, and they would have been kept a high standard. Only the best for the temple sacrifices. Only the purest would be accepted. And so to keep the lambs protected, to mark them aside for sacrifice, the shepherds would have wrapped the lambs in swaddling cloth protect them and to see a lamb in swollen cloths meant that it was set aside for sacrifice so when the angels appear in Luke chapter 2 and say that this shall be a sign to you you'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths <coughs> the shepherds knew exactly what they meant here was a messiah here was a child set aside for sacrifice Remember what John the Baptist said the first time he saw Jesus? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
the one who would be the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, the one who would make the temple obsolete, was set aside for sacrifice from the very start. Now, at communion, what we tend to do is we, we get drawn towards the cross and we look at the nails and the crown of thorns and the spear in the side. And often when I'm sitting down there in that wee corner and I'm praying as we go through communion, so often for me, I know I keep going back to that idea of, wow, Lord, you did all this for me. That, that tends to be my default. That's where my brain goes time and time again, week after week. Wow, Lord, that you would love me enough to do this for me. Because I'm a train wreck sometimes. Like, oh, how he loves me. Especially when there's been times where I have been nothing but unlovable. As I sit there, I think, wow, so this is the kind of God you are. Who loves the unlovable. Who brings the sinner and calls him a child. Because of the cross. That you would love me so much to make me your child. And this morning we can do the same with the manger. We can look at the messy lives of the shepherds. We can look at the rumours and the reputation of Mary. Carrying a baby that wasn't Joseph's. The messy manger. With all the animals and the animal smells. And all the unhygienic processes that would have been happening as she gave birth. And into this God sends forth his son. And I think again to myself, wow, you did that for me? That God so loved the world with all its problems, with all man's inhumanity to man, that you still so loved us all that you'd send your son here like this? To walk about in the messiness of our lives. In the mess that we've made of this world. And I can't help but join in with the angels and say glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. What a saviour we have. And from the very beginning of his life he was set aside for the cross. The Romans didn't win. Judas didn't trick him. This was always the path he was to take. Why? Because you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And so as we bow our heads, as we take some time to reflect, if you want to lead us in prayer, I'd encourage you to do so. If you'd rather just remain quiet and reflect, that's fine as well. But I would encourage you, join me as we reflect and think about, wow, you would do that for me. You care that much about <coughs> me? Glory to God in the highest. Let's bow our heads. And then after a while, can I ask one of the elders to give thanks for, for each of the albums? Thank you.